Thank you. Welcome, <laughs> Facebook. This is Jim Life with the great, the one and only. Da -da -da. The right way to do things. Chuck Wright. Alliance for the Blue, a program that advocates for our active military, veterans, and first responders. Presented by Gear Services Web Design. Alliance for the Brave, serving and empowering those who serve our great country in the line of duty. Tune in, join in, and plug in with us around the globe. Welcome to Alliance for the Brave. In the air everywhere across America, you're listening to Alliance for the Brave, where we bring education, information, and we are here to help you continue the mission. Joining me, the number one Marine in Dallas, Texas, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> Chuck Wright, good morning. Good morning, my friend. And I appreciate you uh, changing the intro as we're going to talk a lot about this year, about the concept of Charlie Mike. Absolutely. I think that's one of the most important things is how can we go forward and how can we also unite this nation back because – with my generation, Vietnam, we came home, we got spit on. Now, I want every group that comes home to be honored. I want to continue the mission that we started in the military. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that uh, a lot of our military leaders have pushed uh, for is this concept. And, and the funny thing is it happens naturally. Uh, guys get out of the service when we have uh, – I think it's 200,000 um, people leave the military to uh, kind of quite used to all the hand signs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you and I started this program, so come on, let's let's mock and roll. Now, and we I, started it almost exactly six years ago. Um, be six years ago next weekend. Yeah. All right. One of the most fantastic people I have ever met, Chuck is a lady named Louise Thaxton out of Louisiana who is a branch manager for Fairway, but she is also a brilliant lady, and she is so veteran-oriented, and she started the American Warrior Initiative. Louise, welcome aboard. This is Alliance for the Brave. Well, I am honored to be part of it this morning. Uh, I don't know what to say about all those things you just said about me, Jim. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Thank you. Well, I have been with Fairway a year, and I think you were one of the first people that I interviewed and talked to. But, Louise, what you do with the American Warrior Initiative, I think, is just amazing. And and how did you get that started in Fairway? Well, and, and you know, I truthfully, nothing could happen with the American Warrior Initiative, and we call that AWI, which is – you know, the initials for the American Warrior Initiative, without the support and leadership, the support of the leadership of the company. Uh, I went into Leesville, Louisiana, which is home of Fort Polk, 16 years ago. And as I sat across the desk, taking loan applications uh, for young men and women just coming back from Iraq and then later Afghanistan, I just started to see the challenges. And I felt like if I were going to serve them in business, then I needed to serve their needs in other things, that I had an obligation to give back. And I just started, I'm a big mouth, so if I'm into something, I want you to be into it. I guess you could call me an evangelist, <laughs> and I'm going to try to uh, evangelize you and say, here's the need and what can we do. And we joined, I joined another nonprofit for a while, and we donated to them, and that's what I would suggest for anybody. You know, people say, well, I'm going to start a nonprofit. Maybe you partner with another nonprofit first and and then start yours. And I was blessed that sharing the needs of the men and women who served in this country's military with our, with our company, the CEO said, you know what, they served us, now we'll serve them. You build it, we'll fund it. Uh, that's a pretty big, that's a wide open door for me. And uh, and they did, and they have for over nine years. They have funded the the overhead for the American Warrior Initiative and allowed me free access, as you very well know, Jim, to just go out to the employees. We have 10,600 employees and say, here's the need. Can we fund 
this need, <laughs> and they come through every time. Louise, so hey, that's been this, pretty awesome. This is Chuck Wright, and I wanted to ask you, uh, and I want to also say that when when they're talking about fairways, they're using shorthand. Uh, it's Fairways Mortgage, which is our title sponsor. But, Louise, what is this passion that's driving you? What is it that your nonprofit does? Well, so in, there's a couple of things. Number one, find the need and fill the need. This past year, we placed 101 service dogs in the hands, hearts, and lives of 101 wow. service members. But there were also over, uh, you know, there were a hundred, uh, let's just say there was about a quarter of a million dollars in gift cards given out. Uh, we helped a World War II veteran put a roof on his house, cost wow. $10,000. We funded, this is one of the things I did locally, is we helped uh, 150 military children uh, help their parents to buy Santa Claus. You know, a lot of people will say, well, let's buy gifts for the military. You know what? I think mom and dad know what kids want. Let's just give them a gift card. Right. Let them go. Let them have, let them be the heroes for the kids. So we gave out $15,000 worth of gift cards to cover 150 children. We did this past Christmas. So find the need, fill the need. We, we probably uh, funded, and I don't have the final numbers, but probably – uh, one and a half million dollars of initiatives last year. Outstanding, and so it's uh, it's a multifaceted nonprofit. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yes. I mean, you know, it's it's as as varied as what are the needs. We have helped uh, active duty military families to create a a room for their child um, that had that had a, a, a an illness that was a special needs child. Uh, we have helped them to create a room for them. We have helped people, well, you know, they had a service dog, but they needed a fence because they they had the dog, but they needed a, a facility. We've helped with dog food. We've During COVID, which was a real challenge for our veterans, as, as you guys very well know, um, many were self-employed, had their own businesses. Those businesses were in trouble of shutting down. They couldn't interact with other veteran organizations, the suicide rates went up. And so what we tried to do was to help the veterans. And I may be going off track, guys. Y'all just draw me back <laughs> in because I can get to talking. And no, we love it. Say, we love okay, it, Louise. Yeah, just stop, Louise. And let me ask you another question. But um, during COVID, I, was, I, I never get depressed. I'm always a positive person. But it was I'm shocked. Shocked to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I woke I woke up one morning and we weren't going to travel because we do a lot of traveling for these initiatives. We have travel all over. We had 40 events scheduled to do 40 different. Um, I mean, there were we had planned 100 dogs in 2020. We were only able to do 50 because service dog company shut down. Uh, service dog breeders stopped breeding. Uh, it just like the world shut down. And I woke up one morning and I had this heavy blanket on me like, I mean, I can't do, I can't do what what I need to do. And then I thought about it in a minute, and I thought, yes, you can. Just 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 talk to yourself, uh, physician, heal thyself, and get up, gear up, and show up. And you have 200 veterans right now in your database that have dogs. Let's help them. So we sent like $500 gift cards to every to help with the dog food. Mm -hmm. Then we started reaching out, is there anything that you need during this time? And we probably funded $200,000 worth of needs just by reaching out to the veterans in our database saying, we're here for you. I know we gave you this three years ago, but what do you need today? And that, uh, you know, sometimes when you get to feeling down and low, what can I do to help someone else? And that will bring you out of the dumps is when you start to help someone else. So one thing I wanted to ask you, and I'm, I'm going to go back to some of the things that you've said, but you talked about you serve a broad area. Would you talk geographically? I mean, are you serving Louisiana? Are you serving the entire nation? Are you serving the region? Here's the deal. I serve from sea to shining sea. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what I heard. Well, I tell you what, oh, our, man, our affiliates you. in Norfolk and on the East Coast are going to be wanting to get your number. <laughs> How can people get a hold uh, of you, yes. Louise? Let's interject that real quick. Okay. Uh, well, they can. I mean, you can call me or you can go to our website, AmericanWarriorInitiative.com, and you can contact us through there. Or, heck, call my cell phone, 318-471-6480. How's that? I'll just give out my number. There we go. You that's, guys call me. The, the, I'm the um, same way. So call me. That's, that's the easy way. Just give me my number. Go to Fairway. Go to AmericanWarriorInitiative.com. You can donate. Uh, veterans can actually apply on our website. We have, uh, you know, one of the cool things is over the past, well, my brother-in-law, was the local VA rep for many years. For 30, he, he served as a Marine in Vietnam, came home from Vietnam and continued to serve. He was a local VA rep for uh, 31 years. He retired. And um, the woman who took his place, she's a 12-year Navy veteran, and, and she's just amazing. She's from my local town. I mean, I'm in a little central Louisiana rural community, but she knows what I do. And so she sends me people like she says, you know, I've got this guy and he needs help. And it wasn't but just two weeks ago. She said, I've got this guy and um, he's, he really needs his roof repaired, but it's going to cost this much money. I Just send me the bid. I mean, let's go with it, Pam. Let's do it. So, you know, we, we find the need, fill the need. We've done walk-in bathtubs for Vietnam veterans getting up in age and, mm -hmm. And uh, those things cost a pretty good bit of money. I don't know. It's almost like just name something. I bet we've done it. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I need to connect you with is the Home Depot Foundation. Yep. They give away uh, materials, and actually people go out from Home Depot and volunteer and do some of the things you're talking about. And so... I'm just trying to match you up with some of that. But the important thing is oh, that'd be great. you're serving people and you're building that up. And by the same token or at the same time, you are a branch manager with Fairway doing mortgages and you do, <laughs> uh, you know, FHA, VA, you do reverse. You do the product yep. I do. And Louise, yep. that's a huge, you have a huge business. I know I've been told. I do, and I'm blessed to have a great team. We did a great year last year, um, and small and compared to some of the other branches within Fairway. But you know what? Um, 300 million, about 1,500 families served because we have lower loan amounts. I also have branches. I got a branch in San Antonio, Texas. Got one in Florida. Uh, Karen Bond, who's a Gold Star mother and part of the AWI team, actually went in the mortgage business. So. She has a branch for me, and then I have a branch in Colorado Springs. So, you know, I've branched out, and uh, I'm blessed to have a great team. They're all on board with AWI. They know that a lot of my time is spent on that, on just that mission and that that focus. Uh, <laughs> that, in fact, it was several years ago when I told them, you know, I need my team to step up because I'm going to be focused on this. This is going to help all of us. It's going to help all the veterans. We serve a lot of veteran communities, just the towns that I just named you, you know, Colorado Springs, San Antonio, Texas. Um, you know, we serve a lot of veterans. And, well, that's uh, that's absolutely they, wonderful. That ties right in. Um, and I'm not sure if you've ever heard the term or read the book, Charlie Mike, uh, the references to continue the mission. You know how the military loves their anagrams. But I love listening to this because this is my passion, is continuing the mission. Uh, and I absolutely love what you're doing. Um, I, I, the one question I had is, is as you, and granted COVID has thrown us all a curveball, what do you see or how do you look at it? Uh, and we may have to get this answer on the other side of the, uh, of the break. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about or, or listen to you talk about what's the vision for the next year, three years, five years. And let's do that on the other side of the break. All right. We're about okay. to come on a break. Okay. So stay with us. If you're on Facebook, stay with us and enjoy it. Louise Thaxton, one great human being. She's got some information we're going to be coming back with that is fantastic. So this is Jim Blythe with Chuck Wright. You got the Navy and the Marine. 
That ain't no bad deal. All right, we'll be back right after these words from all of our partners. This is Alliance for the Brave. No, Chuck Wright. By golly, you need to get to know him. <laughs> and Louise, can you hear us as well? Are, are you... I can. Okay. One of the things about Chuck is he is the most plugged-in Marine. You headed up Toys for Tots a year ago, didn't you? A couple of years ago. Yeah, I headed up Toys for Tots. And then you yeah. headed up Reads awesome. Across America. So I work with Reads Across America, uh, as does my um, brand-new Eagle Scout son, Travis. Um, in fact, it's, uh, and I have to share this with you, Louise, you were talking about helping a World War II veteran. Uh, we had a World War II and Korean War veteran, um, and unfortunately, we lost him a couple of weeks ago, uh, as, as we are losing a lot of those gentlemen, but uh, we had gone in, and we had completely, he was in, uh, he had, uh, was in a rehab facility, and so we had about a week that we had access to his house. We had to clean it completely out. Uh, unfortunately, his eyesight had really started to go and lost his faculties and things like that. But we had to completely clean it. It was absolutely disgusting. We got everything out of it. But we had a team from Lowe's. And we were talking about Home Depot. And I got to get a little plug for Lowe's because the Lowe's team stepped up. And they provided a ton of stuff, uh, manpower to help us get everything out of there. But they went through, and it was, we need new blinds. We we needed a new ceiling fan with a light fixture. They gutted everything, pulled it out, and installed all brand new stuff. Um, so as one of those resources, in addition to the Home Depot Foundation, I, I always give a plug now for my friends at Lowe's. Yeah, Love them both. They, they both they, do great things for our veterans. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yes. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. So as you're looking for those uh, types of connections, and the other one that I'll mention, I don't know if you have a Walmart in your area, but Walmart has a foundation, and you can go on and make requests for grants. And it's real easy We've to do. We've never done the request for grants. We have worked with our local. We don't have a Home Depot in my local right. town, but we, but we do have a Lowe's. And there is one thing about Lowe's, I will say this, our local Lowe's, whatever we ask for, they give it. There was yep. one point we wanted to do flags. Um, <clears throat> they provided the flags. I That's mean, outstanding. They've just been really awesome. They've really been awesome. And I think when you're a Lowe's in a military town, uh, you get it. I love that when I go to my local Lowe's, there's a place for Purple Heart um, recipients, you know, uh, parking. Yep. So when you park at our local Lowe's, there's a, there's a Purple Heart parking. I love that. So I do love all of our our um, local companies. Uh, a race across America is interesting. We have a branch manager in South Carolina who actually do he funded the last three dogs of 2021. It took us from 98 to to 101, and he did that at a race across America event. He he always uh, attends those, and Karen spoke. And it was a wonderful event. So that I love that that mission and that initiative also, the wonderful hearts of the people of Reese Across America. Louise, I'm gonna digress for just a second. They're about to well, all right, we're gonna go back live on the radio. So we'll be right back. Facebook. You're listening to Alliance for the Brave, honoring, serving, and empowering those who serve our great country in the line of duty. Today's program is presented by Gear Services Web Design. Learn more about our mission and how you can plug in with us at allianceforthebrave.com. Now, back to the conversation. Welcome back. This is Jim Blythe with Chuck Wright, Marine Extraordinaire. Hoorah. And you are all about continuing the mission. And we're Absolutely. We're talking to a really great lady, Louise Thaxton with Fairway Independent Mortgage. I work for the same company. I've been here about a year. She's been here about nine years. Amazing what she has done. Go to AmericanWarriorInitiative.com. Take a look at it. 
They funded about, Louise, you said about a million and a half last year in various and sundry things, which included giving away service dogs, giving away uh, gift cards for dog food and fences for dogs. Tell us just a little bit about all of the things, again, that you were doing as we go through this. Well, um, <clears throat> Jim, just one correction. I've been with Fairway 21 years. Oh, really? So I've been here. I drank the Kool-Aid a long time ago. <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I didn't think you were that old. You're in your 30s, right? <laughs> yeah, I love you, Jim. I love you, Jim. Yes. Yes, I love you, Jim. <laughs> and your yeah, husband you was what? Army, yeah. wasn't he? No, no. My father was Army. My stepfather was Army. My mother obviously had a thing for soldiers. I don't know. But uh, both of my fathers were Army, yes. Wow. Well, that, bring, that brings you close. And, again, what we want people to do is go take a look at AmericanWarriorInitiative.com. They raised a million and a half dollars through the 10,000-plus employees of Fairway last year. I would like for other people to continue to mention and join in because all of what they do, not about Fairway's mortgage company, this is about Fairway's participation in helping our veterans. One of the things that um, and we're going to kind of a little bit sh slightly shift the focus of the show, it's not going to shift too far because I, I think Jim has always had a strong heart for those continuing the mission. But it's people like Louis, and I love hearing this story. I mean, I'm just getting all fired up and uh, trying to figure out. And, and, and I want to hear more about the 101 Dalmatians that you uh, placed this year. They weren't Dalmatians? Well, I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't resist when you said 101. Listen, listen. So um, my, my partner in crime that helps me along the way, along with Karen Vaughn, is Sean Furnell, and he's an Army Ranger. And Oh, my uh, gosh. I know Sean. Well, he he and I both, we lead the way, as he says, as yep. the Army Ranger does, lead the way. And uh, just... I couldn't help myself. It's 101, so I dressed up like Cruella <laughs> DeVille. And, I love it. And, and I did a photo shoot, and then I sent it to Sean. He said, you do know that Cruella DeVille was an evil person who killed dogs and, and all this. And I go, you know what? What's the, what's the newest version of 101? I think she had reasons, and don't worry about it. I can't help myself. And besides, I love the black and white wig that I got to wear. So, uh, okay, Jim, do you remember the show that we went to that Alan West was at over yeah. in Fort Worth? Yeah. Sean Purnell was one of the speakers there. He has oh, written yeah. a book. It was a ways back, but it's called Outlaw Platoon. He's since written several other books. You brought up Sean. I got to plug his book. And the reason I say this is it is, and he, he's an Army guy, so it, it, it took a lot for, for a Marine to say this. It might be the best book on small unit tactics I've ever read, but it's his story of his unit in Afghanistan, and they were kind of um, they were in the wild west out on the eastern side of Afghanistan, and, it, and it's just anybody who is into military books, uh, people giving back like Sean certainly has been doing. Uh, I, I if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. You will enjoy it. And Sean is part and of. We have, we have, yes, he's part of AWI. He helped to. He was actually one of the co-founders. We were partnering with another nonprofit when Sean came on board with us, and he traveled. He I, he calls me his work mom. I call him my work son because we travel so much together every year. Thirty thirty five to forty events pre COVID. But Outlaw Platoon is one of the books that all the branches when we have these events and we buy in the community, real estate agents, whomever, and have these big events, that's one of the books that give away. So we've literally given away tens of thousands of Sean's book, Outlaw Platoon, which I've read three times. <laughs> we right. actually have four. Yeah, and we, I mean, we've, I we've got to jump. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to go to a commercial break. Stay with us if you're on Facebook. Come back to enjoy Louise Thaxton as oh, we this talk is great about stuff. Absolutely wiring yourself up, redoing your brain in seven steps to getting yourself off and going in 2022. This is Jim Blythe with Chuck Wright and the beautiful Miss Louise Thaxton. We are Alliance for the Brave, and we'll be right back after these words from all of our partners, one of which is Fairway. 
<laughs> Fairway Mortgage. You got to do that. They don't know what who Fairway is. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try. It is great. I am so thrilled that you you're back. You're, you're helping me. You're doing this, and this is our deal. So the you know? so the backstory for those that don't know is I actually uh, um, way back when, and I believe it was six years. I'm gonna have to it go was check 2015. the date. 2015. 2015. So yeah, that would be six years. We are six years old in the show, and I actually founded it. And I remember sitting with the uh, with the producer, we were actually at a Texas Legends game in the suite um, and sitting talking about how we were going to get this kicked off. And Jim joined us in, you know, first month. So, you know, he's he is definitely a founder uh, and has continued the show, and it's, it's great stuff. I think the show has grown. I think it's gotten better. Uh, I think Jim was a massive addition. Um, they described me as the boat anchor, but that, that's another story. <laughs> well, you know, Chuck, one of the things, I love doing radio. Been doing radio since I was 16 years old. Did Armed Forces Radio when I was in the Navy. Here's the thing. As we have progressed and we have done this program, and you've been on with me many times, you helped start this. Chuck, I have seen the tremendous need within the veteran community, and I am a veteran. I'm yep. a Vietnam veteran. You're a Marine Corps veteran. And we have changed our, our focus to really what can we do to help. So we have participated with Carry the Load, mm -hmm. Mission Continues, Team Rubicon. We have gone through uh, IAVA. We've gone with uh, David Rapora, an adaptive training foundation. The VA, I've developed some tremendous relationships yep. with the VA. And i got to tell you, we have learned and grown in this program so much in the last six years. And i got to say a special thank you to Robin Valtudo, who's now on the East Coast, who's driving this thing with Chesapeake. But i got to tell you, this has been a huge eye-opener. And that's one of the things you and I talked about. The mission continues. How can we open other people's eyes? Maybe they're not military, but how can we show them how this mission can positively impact and bring this nation back together. Absolutely, and I think that it's one of the things you said, and it is, it is so absolutely important. It is not just serving other veterans, but it is being the example of leadership. Um, I, I'm a, I grew up a military brat, so uh, before I went into the Marine Corps, and so I understood the culture. And it was the most, you know, we talk about diversity today, but it was the most diverse portion of our society. And this was back in the 60s. So, yeah, I'm not quite as old as Jim, but uh, you don't have to quite carbon date me yet. <laughs> but All uh, right. Jim, you're letting him get away with that. Yeah. You're letting him get away with that. Yeah. Yep. He's a Marine. You're going to let him say that Washington was your first commanding officer? <laughs> That's not right. That's awesome. No, that's actually, awesome. it was... Uh, now, come on, Chris. That's not fair. It was Ulysses S. Grant. We all know that. <laughs> hey, you're putting the words in my mouth. I'm uh, just saying. Oh, No, man. wait. Jim was Navy. It was Commodore Perry. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I think never give up the ship, you know. There we go. Hey, uh, Chris, thank you for being on board and our engineer. And Facebook, this is Chris O'Sullivan, and he is a phenomenal engineer. Thank you. You got talking to Mike, my friend. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not oh, talking to the Mike, microphone. I'm not man. talking to the Mike. All right. Oh, I think your mic just went MIA. Uh -huh. Pat Wheeler, host of Texas Links on the Air. The thing I love about golf, it's the discussion. So we're uh, we're experiencing a little bit of a technical difficulty here, so I'm going to do a little soft, a little radio soft shoe and keep us going. We're going to get Jim uh, back up and running here. But one of the things that you will see that our audience will see as we speak to a regular audience, we're really going to focus on the leadership concepts that the probably is the single most valuable thing that our, our veterans bring to our society.
on Facebook or online at allianceforthebrave.com. And now, back to Alliance for the Brave. Welcome back. You got Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright. We are your dream team on Alliance for the Brave. Joining us, the beautiful Louise Thaxton, American Warrior Initiative, also branch manager for Fairway Independent Mortgage, one of the most incredible people. You talk about the mission continuing. Louise, one of the things that got sent out within our company that has over 10,000 employees is Keep Playing by Louise Saxton. And you're talking about being able to create this moment, the person you're wanting to be. Tell us a little bit about what you have written and about the seven steps to rewiring your brain and getting you off and running in leadership in this new year. Well, I've always, people want to change. (laughs) People want their lives changed. But many people aren't willing to do what it takes to change their life. And I'm a firm believer, and I've witnessed it. If you want to change your life, you have to change your mind. But it's not just your mind, it's your brain. What they have discovered in the last, really the last few decades, it was unknown uh, in the 80s, early 90s, was the term called neuroplasticity. And that is our brain is plastic. It can be molded, <laughs> and uh, I'm talking to two veterans. I bet you remember boot camp, don't you? And I bet Boy, the way I. you thought when you went. <laughs> but think about this, and I use this as an analogy, is how you thought on that first day of boot camp was very different than the way you thought on the last day of boot camp. And that those strategies of changing your mind, they were, um, <clears throat> it was disciplined. It was focused. It was intentional. And someone can use those same strategies. They just go through their own personal boot camp. And they have to go through the steps. And real quickly, the seven steps are. (laughs) Sorry, we're having a little bit of minor technical difficulties here. If you hear some odd noises. (laughs) But continue, Louise, because this is fascinating. Okay. Well, the first step is a mission. Purpose. It's purpose. Because I use seven Ps. But you could use mission. You could use intent. You know, I used the example of Sean Parnell, who talked about he was just a young college kid. His his uh, greatest, the, the biggest thing he thought about was how much beer he was going to drink that night or what kind it was, until he woke up on September 11th and turned on his TV. And at that point, his mission in life changed, his purpose in life changed. And for a lot of people, it's, uh, it's they go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you know what, if you don't change, you're going to die. Or there is that our significant other says, if you don't change, this is over. Or it's our branch manager. If you're in sales, it's like someone tells you, like, you know what, if you don't change, you're going bankrupt. So you have to have a why. You have to have a purpose. You have to have a mission. And that's the first thing. And that's the most important thing is discover. Why, why will you put on this earth? And are you going toward that mission? You know, you say that your mission continues. Those people who serve in the military, getting out of the military doesn't mean they quit serving. Absolutely (laughs) right. You know, they continue to serve. Because I had a young man who worked for AWI. He had lost his leg in Afghanistan. He was amazing. And um, I told him, I said, we weren't dangerous enough for him. Uh, We didn't create any life or death instances. So he left us and joined the Colorado Police Force. He was the first. (laughs) amputee to join the Colorado Police Force, the fourth in the nation. And uh, but his purpose had never changed, even though he he was a Marine and even though he he left the military, he still had that purpose. The second thing, so you've got to have your purpose detailed, written out, lined out. And the second thing is possible. Uh, do you believe that what you want to be, what you want to do, is it possible? Uh, I think it was Henry Ford that said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Uh, I told some of my loan officers the other day when they were just, let's just say it, whining. And I said, the only difference between you and the top producer is you. So you've got to change your mind about it. So you've got to believe it's possible to do whatever the mission is, whatever that big, hairy, audacious goal is, you've got to believe it's possible. The third thing is passion, and you got to tie emotion to it. If you don't, if you don't have the feelings for it, like someone says, "Well, I want ten thousand dollars in my bank account," what's the passion on that? People say, "Well, I want to 
uh, I want some new referral partners. I go, who wants new referral partners? They go, well, that's how we need to get loans. I said, why do you want more loans? They said, well, because I need money to buy a lake house for my family. And I said, okay, that's where the emotion comes to. So you've got to tie it to what are you, what is it that's tied to your heart? Your heart's got to be in it. All, 100% your heart has got to be in it. That's the third thing. The fourth thing is having a plan. A lot of people, and I'm one of those, let's just jump in there and do it. And I'm one of those, but I always come back to what's the plan. You've got to have a plan. And uh, I believe in the plan of 7 by 11, journaling, writing down seven things tonight that you're going to do tomorrow before 11 o'clock that's going to propel you to your mission. Uh, and if you, if part of that is calling, if you're in sales, you call people. Well, seven calls is not seven things. It's <laughs> seven different things. So the seven by 11, two things that does, you have a plan for the next day before the day. And then the, another thing is it gets it off your mind today because you already know what the mission is tomorrow. The mission is written down. You just get up and implement, and you do it before 11 o'clock. I'm a huge proponent of journaling and reading because if you want to change your mind, which changes your brain, you got to put some new thoughts in it. Your same old thoughts have been circling around. Come on, dude. Read a book. I mean, read out loud a tune. Read, read some good – I'll tell you a great book is War of uh, – is the, uh, the War of Art. War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, who's also a Marine, and that is one of the best business books or entrepreneur books there is, War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, and he is amazing, and he talks about we all have this, this draw. It's our calling inside of us, but there's this thing called resistance with a capital R that wants to keep us from doing it. And every one of us, whether you want to lose weight, uh, you know, deepen the relationship with your spouse, save money, be debt-free, help start a nonprofit, help a thousand veterans this year, whatever it is, resistance will come against you and say all these things. Number one, you can't do it. You don't have the time. You don't have the resources. So you have a plan and you implement something every day, seven things every day before 11 o'clock. The, uh, the fifth thing is perseverance. Now, the way you build a habit as you well know from boot camp, is you do it every day. Right, guys? Did you yeah. do it every day? <laughs> did, you, did you do the same thing every day? <laughs> it is perseverance and persistence, and it is doing it every day, repetitive. Now, I have this, um, my thought process is 52 days, and I know different branches. Uh, I think the Marines have the longest boot camp. I don't know. There's probably some jokes about that, but I won't go there. But the Marines have the longest uh, Navy, Air Force, uh, you know, Air Army. They have different lengths of time. During that period of time, it is transforming young men and women who went into there just like just out of college or just out of high school, transforming the, their minds into warriors. But you've got to do it every day. You've got to be persistent. You've got to persevere. So the fifth one is persevere. Don't, if you're going to create a habit, you've got to do it every day, every day, the same way, every day. The uh, sixth one is, um, and I got those mixed up. The sixth one is actually, so you flip them, but it doesn't matter. But the sixth one is priorities. <clears throat> so make that the fifth one and perseverance the sixth. But priorities is, and people talk about priority. Uh, time management there's no such thing as time management you can't manage time time is time and and nothing changes yep. time you cannot manage time but you can manage yourself and you can manage your time to your priority and that's what a lot of people do they have these goals they have have a mission they want to accomplish it but they just don't prioritize the steps so that's the the, six, the fifth one is Priority, the sixth one is perseverance, and the last one is promise keeper. You know, um, and you guys know this, that on the warrior ethos, you know, you, you make a pledge that you're going to keep going. You never, never leave a fallen brother. You make a pledge. Well, you know what? When you become a promise keeper, you promise yourself, this time I'm going to do it. Yep. You promise your your family. You promise your Friends, you promise. You make a promise, and then you become a promise keeper, and that's the seven mindsets that can literally transform anything. 
Louise, anybody. I, I wanted to ask you, these are, and I'm reading this, and there's a lot more depth to this. She's kind of hitting the uh, the high points of everything, and it's absolutely great. Is this, have you published this out there? Where could somebody find this to read this? Oh or God. if you'll do this, if you'll email it to me or I'll have Jim email it to me, I'll put it out there. I'll take credit for it because every joke in my life is stolen. I have never had an original thought in my life. But this is so, brilliant stuff. So I'm, so I'm going to say this on radio. I've already said this to my coach who has been telling me this. The book will be published the book will be written, finished. It's been written for years. Uh, but it's going to be to a publisher by February 21st. What I'm going to say is I believe in 50, 52 days. There are seven 52-day periods in the year. You can change seven habits. 52 wow. Days and my, the first 52 days of the year, I'll have it to a publisher on February 21st. I just said that on radio. Outstanding. I, I, I want a copy, but I tell you what we're going to do. Then. When you get it published, you're going to come back on the air, and we're going to see if we can't figure out. Chris can help us do a Zoom deal where people can actually see you, <laughs> and we'll hold up the book and show people. Because this is important. How do we start off a new year? Let me tell you, one of the things, you, you're talking to two pilots. Chuck was a SAR pilot helicopters i'm a private pilot i've flown i have my own plane attitude equals altitude if you don't have the right mindset attitude in flying a plane will get you killed right absolutely so if you got the wrong attitude you're going to be in deep trouble so attitude is the same thing in life and you were talking about boot camp the di i had in boot camp drove us mercilessly more than any other company in the boot camp and when we finished this chief walked up to me and he said now do you know who gunner's mate chief marvin is don't you and i'm like uh no he said he and three other men were trapped on a riverboat in china when the japanese invaded and they walked 1250 miles to get to vladivostok he said he Whoa. i that was the most driven man I ever saw in my life and he was pushing us because he had been in some of the worst of the combat in the Navy during World War II. My grandfather was the same thing in the same way. The things you're talking about are going to make you great and that's what we wanted. We've come out of basically two not so good years thanks to COVID and I think we need to adopt these types of things to change our attitude, change our mind, and build and go forward. Absolutely, I couldn't I couldn't agree with what Jim said more. Um, but what I love, and I'm one of those who loves you've created in a very easy to follow step by step process. Uh, I love the references uh, to the military and to boot camp because you are absolutely right. And by the way, the Marines go 13 weeks. Uh, there has been pushback to shorten that. Uh, and there's a reason that the Marines, you can tell a lot of jokes, but if you want something done, you wind up calling the Marines. And even Sean will tell you that. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, um, without a doubt, I, I look back, I, I'm third generation Navy. Matter of fact, my grandfather, who was career Navy, was in World War II. I wanted to learn how to do something one time, and he pulls out the Blue Jackets manual, and I said, Gramps, I can't read. I'm, ju I'm just getting started in school. And so he sat down and taught me to read using the Navy Enlisted Man Blue Jackets manual. I mean, I bleed wow. Navy blue, and I know that it changed my life and gave me direction and purpose. And I was president of my first company by age 30 doing development. I know what I love to do is help people. And again, having your priorities, having your purpose, having that persistence to keep putting one foot in front of the other, that's, yeah. that was passed to me from my grandfather, Chief Gunner's mate Marvin. I'll tell you what, though. We're going to take a quick break and then wrap this show up. We're going to bring this into the dock. I want to say a special thank you. Please stay with us, Louise. But to having Louise Thaxton, and I have this thing that she wrote for Fairway, and by golly, if she doesn't mind, if people want it, 
We'll make a copy of it and get them to us. That that thing he refers to are the seven steps. Yes, because <laughs> that's a precursor to a great book. All right, we're going to be right back with Alliance for the Brave after these words from all of our partners, which includes Fairway, one of the Fairway Thaxton's, Thaxton's great, great opportunities for everybody to find out about American Warrior Initiative through Fairway. So thank you, and we'll be right back. I'll fix that. We, right. we will get that fixed. So we, we're still here with our Facebook crowd, Louise. This is awesome, awesome stuff. I am very excited about this. Um, I wanted to hear more about 101 Dalmatians, but uh, you're just doing so much more. <laughs> um, Chuck, I well, wanted, um, that's going to be an ongoing I'm joke from now on. <laughs> even on Um, if you go to my Facebook page, I posted the picture of me as Cruella DeVille, so <laughs> it may be my it, – it, the only thing is I get, like, do you know she was a bad person? I go, hey, I mean, I'm sorry. It's a cute outfit, and it fits with 100 outfit. Dalmatians. I mean. <laughs> Louise, in introducing you to Chuck, who uh, we're asking him to keep keep joining us, keep being a part of this team because he helped start it. But one of the things Chuck – you're involved with the Texas Veterans Commission? Yes, I sit on the uh, Fund for Veteran Assistance. In fact, I'm going down at the end of the month, and, and uh, what we're going to do is last year we had $30 million that was raised through donations and through the lottery that the Texas Veterans Commission is going to allot um, to various veteran service organizations and organizations that serve veterans. So it's not exactly the same. Uh, the one negative, Louise, is is that we the money has to be spent on Texas veterans. We are the number one or number two state, depending on who uh, you want to believe, for, for veteran populations. Um, but uh, it's a lot of fun, but we have to sort through over 200 grant requests, and uh, we make our recommendations to the uh, Texas Veterans Commissioners. They'll make the, uh, the final, the, give the final blessing. But it is a very gratifying project, and it's it's one of the reasons I'm so fascinated um, by the dog service because that is such it's something that I've learned through. You know, Jim was talking about opening our eyes to all the work that veterans do, and it is involved in veterans. But the impact of service dogs is just incredible. By the way, Louise, I you know, gotta I look never it up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What, what I was going to tell you. Is I never knew until a veteran told me this about six years ago. He said, that dog saved my life. Oh, yeah. And I didn't understand oh, it then, and I don't understand it now, but I don't understand electricity either. So it's okay. Uh, but over and over, we have heard that dog saved my marriage. That dog, that dog saved my family. That dog saved my life. So the way I look at it is that we do our part to save lives. And, and uh, Fairway covers... The entire cost, uh, uh, the overhead, and that's a huge thing when you're working with a nonprofit is the overhead. Like, what's the percentage that you spend on overhead? Ours is zero. So if you give a dollar to the American Warrior Initiative, a dollar goes to a veteran. So that's a pretty cool thing. And it caught, the overhead is millions of dollars. The Fairway covers it. We um, had a lady on this program, one of the most enjoyable programs I've ever done, and she is a dog trainer. She's a deputy sheriff up in uh, Fannin County. And I got to tell you, I'm going to get you and she connected because she trains the dogs. She works with breeders and then takes the dogs and train them to be service dogs. And many of these are not just service dogs for people with PTS. They're combat related as well. So we're going to be right back after these words. And Louise, we're, we're still live with our Facebook Welcome back. You got Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright. 
the Marine and the Navy, we're going to bring this ship of a program back into the dock. But we have welcomed a absolutely beautiful partner of Louise Thaxton, who heads up American Warrior Initiative. She's also a branch manager with Fairway Independent Mortgage, my company that I work for. I'm so thrilled to be a part of it. They have done so much, raising a million and a half dollars. They've given away 101 dogs. You've given away so much in terms of helping veterans. And Louise, thank you so much for being on board and being a part of our show today. We're going to we're going to promote your new book too. Come on. Let us help you. <laughs> hey Hey, I am honored. I think it's that, that enemy that Stephen Trestle taught, calls resistance that's kept me from publishing it. But it's going to happen. I, I'm done. I'm done with fooling around. It's going to happen. Well, and uh, what an honor to be on you, with you guys this morning. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, we enjoy it. And Diane and I need to get to Louisiana. We'll fly the beach over and uh, see you one day. You're near Alexandria, aren't you? When you say yes, central Louisiana? I am. I am uh, so, again. Yes. I'm about an hour from LA. Yes. How can people get a hold of you? What is the best uh, email address? What is the website for American Warrior Initiative? If you want to give out your phone number, we want people to get in touch and get to know Louise Thaxton because you are a shot of adrenaline to the whole world. <laughs> well, uh, you can email us uh, at AWI. That's the initials for the American Warrior Initiative, AWI at fairway, in the, fairwaymc.com, fairwaymc.com, AWI at fairwaymc.com. Or go to our website, AmericanWarriorInitiative.com. You have me, fill out an application. If you have a request, you can send it through there. Uh, if you want to call me, heck, here's my cell phone, 318 471 Six four eight zero. I respond very well to text. So you text me, 318-471-6480. What we do is we find the need, we fill the need. If it's a veteran, by the way, I need to say this, it's veterans, active duty military, and first responders. So a lot of our first responders were military, but a lot of those guys, gals, need help with dogs also. So I just wanted to throw that out there. There's, there's a lot of heroes of America that we need to be uh, supporting and helping, and you guys are doing the good work. Uh, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for your service. Uh, thank you for your continued uh, moving forward with the mission. The mission goes on, and thank you for that, and I'm honored to have joined you today. Well, thank you, Louise. Louise, I always like to close with a prayer. So join us as we... Say a quick prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all of our active duty veterans and those serving across the nation as first responders. Protect them, keep them safe, and watch over them. Bring them safely home every night. Thank you, Jesus, for all they do and for continuing the mission. This I pray in Christ's name today. Amen. I, I got to tell you. You need to go to AmericanWarriorInitiative.com and find out about Louise Thaxton and what she's doing. Let's see if we can't make it 200 dogs next year, right? 202? Wouldn't that be great? 2000. Uh, okay, 2022. 202. Let's have a goal, Louise, that, that I'll work and help you to raise the money to give away 200 dogs. That's All outstanding. Right? Louise you just get, shot you, you a friend request. Dog. All right. Well, I, think, I think I accepted it. Okay, cool. Chris, I want to say thank you for being our engineer. Thank you for Chuck Wright for coming back on the team. And thank you for Robin Valtudo and all of those that help us, Atoya, London. Thank you for being part of Alliance for the Brave. And Louise, oh, my beautiful wife, Diane, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. I'll hear about that on the way home. <laughs> Thank you for being part of Alliance for the Brave. Thank you, and please join us on Facebook. Go in and take a look at the podcasts we're doing, YouTube. Go sponsor, be a sponsor on YouTube. Join us on YouTube. We're playing these across the nation. We want to be able to reach more people. So this is Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright saying thank you for being part of Alliance for the Brave. <laughs>
Green side, red side, blue side, baby. You got it.